Day two from SEC Media Days, and of course, the dogs are in the house, and we've got everything you need to know here on UGASports.com. This is Jed May. I'm Randy Powers of Dan Beast Media. Jed, let's get right to it. The dogs are in the house. Kirby took the stage. What did we take away? Yeah, well, this is a huge event because this is the the unveiling of the mantra for the year for Georgia, right? And yep. this one, Kirby Smart said it came from a Nike, and it's assume nothing. Assume nothing from last year as a team, as an individual player. Um, take each year individually for what it is. And I think as a team who obviously fell short of its ultimate goal last year, that is the... I guess, I guess a mantra that rings home, don't assume you're going to get back there just because you're Georgia. So, um, and he, he even uh, worked in a funny quote about uh, Dan Lanning saying, yeah, I wish I had some of uh, the NIL money that Phil Knight was giving to Oregon, but that's a different story. So, don't we all? Um, yeah, don't we all, exactly. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the overarching message, at least of Kirby Smart's opening remarks. Right. Um, and he had some praise for the players he brought today, um, Carson Beck, Michael Williams and Malachi Starks as well. Yeah, and uh, for each of those three guys, one of the themes that he he seemed to lean on was their development and growth inside the program, mm -hmm. uh, especially Carson Beck. Mm -hmm. That was a bell he rung about how he's kind of a unicorn in the world of college football today because of the way he decided to stick around, and you can see that in his growth and development. And Carson actually talked about that today too, the way he grew up after what happened at UAB in 21. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are your thoughts on all of that? Yeah, well, Kirby Smart said, you know, our message is if you stay at Georgia, you're going to develop over your time here. That doesn't always happen because guys just bail. But Carson right. Beck is a good example of if you stay, good things will happen. And you mentioned that UAB game in 21. He said today, I thought all week I was going to be the starter. Yeah. Friday night they told me I wasn't, and he admitted he didn't handle it very well. He went home and didn't talk to anybody. He spent the rest of that year feeling sorry for himself, he said. Um, and obviously with Stetson Bennett's backup in 22, and now his mindset has just completely shifted. He feels he, he is the lead. Even last year, he said, I didn't feel like necessarily the vocal leader. That, Cedric, that was Cedric Van Pran, right. who had earned it. And Beck said today, you know, he's got a year under his belt. He's won at Auburn. He's took this team to an SEC championship, won the Orange Bowl. He feels he's got the, not respect of his teammates, but he has, he has proven himself in the field, I guess. Um, and he, he has earned the right to be that vocal leader. So... Um, it's, it's interesting to see. The, it's it's not like Stetson Bennett's journey. It's obviously very different, but it, it's an odyssey in and of itself. From highly touted recruit, he had the the job right there at least before JT Daniels was hurt. Yeah. Lost it for in a, in a scenario I don't think anybody really would have saw coming at the time. Lost it for two years to Stetson Bennett. And, but he's taken a shot and run with it over the past year or so. Yeah, and if you want to hear Carson say that yourself, check out the UGASports.com TikTok feed. The video's up there for you. It's everything you need. We got you covered. Now, he wasn't the only one here. Malachi Starks is here, All-American candidate safety, uh, and Michael Williams. So leadership seems to be the thread line, uh, the through line for these guys. So what did they have to say on those things? Well, Malachi Starks was, he actually, speaking of Carson Beck, he said him and Beck joke around because he tells Carson, I am on defense, which you are to the offense in terms of being that leader. So he's a very quiet, humble guy. That's, those are the words Kirby Smart used. Um, and he, Kirby Smart actually said he, all these notions out there that freshmen can't play day one in Georgia's right. defense, it's too hard. Malachi Starks has been playing from day one, so right. I don't know who, who that's targeted at, what uh, recruit that was uh, supposed to hear that, but it, it's, and we could see the same thing with KJ Bolden this fall as well. So, um, but Malachi Starks was like, yeah, I want to be the leader. I want to do the best I can, take the pressure off of others from the back end of that secondary. And um, Michael Williams, Kirby Smart mentioned him as well, very versatile guy. We obviously, the whole storyline of him moving outside linebacker from the Orange Bowl, that's a full-time thing now. And he, he looks primed to have a, a big year. He could end up being I mean, potentially the highest drafted out, out, of, out of all three of those guys that were here today. Yeah, which is crazy considering that all three of those guys could be first round, right, take it in sure. the first round. So <clears throat> about Michael. Kirby did mention that he is also taking on that leadership role mm -hmm. in addition to moving him around. Um, is, is that the sort of thing that you think Michael's poised to do on that defensive line? Because there are a couple other veterans right there. Yeah, and that was, I think, one of the more actually interesting things that Kirby said because he said there's, you know, he said Michael is very versatile and stuff right. on the field, but there's no more bigger impact than he has in the locker room. In the locker room, right. And Michael has been a guy that through – not necessarily no fault of his own, but he has had transfer rumors pop up a couple times. I remember actually asking him about it at the Orange Bowl. So um, it, it's 
interesting to hear Kirby Smart say that and say no matter what the outside noise has been, Michael has been a guy that's leading by example in that locker room, in the weight room, uh, on the practice field. So if, if Georgia is going to get back to that college football playoff this year, he needs to be that you know, 8, 9, 10 sack guy coming right. off the edge, uh, which he has all the tools and all the potential to do for sure. Okay. Well, uh, what my favorite answer, the thing that, that got my attention from Kirby today was when he was asked a question about Texas and their mm-hmm. entrance into the league and, and how he thought they would handle it or what they should expect. I forget exactly how it was phrased, but I thought he answered that perfectly because he said every game is a big game in this league and humility is just a week away, something he's very fond of saying. So in that in that way, he addressed head on Texas coming into the league and sort of thinking they might pull, you know bully people around, but at the same time didn't show them any disrespect in any way. Yeah, I mean, Texas is obviously a team that has got as much talent as anybody in the country. They went to the playoff last year. They bring back uh, Quinn Ewers. Um, but it's it's a different beast in the SEC. I mean, yeah. it, it's just a different league week in and week out. I believe Texas even plays Michigan, too, which obviously in yeah. the SEC. But that yep. that tax on – it wears – it. It wears on you throughout the season. It's every week. There's no cupcakes out there. So um, it, it's going to be very interesting how Texas handles it and what their where depth chart looks like, say, come November November 1st, what health-wise what they look like and do they have the depth to to roll with. And I think they, they probably do. They've proven they can match up with – it's not like the Big 12 was a, a softball conference, right? right? But it's going to be interesting to see how they can hold up through – 12-game regular season, maybe an SEC uh, title game, and then three playoff games potentially after that. It's a long, long season, which a lot of coaches were asked about today. Yeah, I think all of us are going to have to answer that, find that answer as we mm-hmm. move through the season. Um, so Texas isn't the only new team coming into the league this year. Oklahoma made their appearance at SEC Media Days today. Any quick thoughts on Oklahoma joining? Yeah, I mean, Brent Venables said pretty much what you expect them to say. They're excited for the challenge. He said they're running toward the SEC, and he said Oklahoma as a program is not intimidated, and I think that's something that – I don't know if it gets forgotten, but Oklahoma and Texas are two historical blue bloods of, of college football. You know, they are programs who everybody makes the the, the joke about Texas bullying the SEC or the Big Twelve. Yeah, but they are big time programs that are used to winning at the highest level for years and years and years. So um, these guys at Oklahoma are not intimidated. Um, they are. Like they say in um, you know in the major, those guys are big league hitters too. Yeah, Oklahoma's guys are big league hitters, and they they've got a tough schedule. They play LSU and Baton Rouge. They start off at Tennessee. Um, they got a road trip to I think Ole Miss and Auburn. Yeah, so it's, it's a tough road schedule for sure for Oklahoma, but um, they're they're looking forward to the challenge. Well, Greg Sankey made a fun joke today. Uh, say called it Big Eight Tuesday in the <laughs> afternoon part of the part of the session yeah. uh, because you had Oklahoma and then you they followed that up with Missouri mm-hmm. and of course Eli and the team coming off a big year last year so they're looking to make some strides this year sort of back that up. Uh, any just finishing thoughts on Missouri? Yeah, they like Oklahoma. They're embracing the expectations. I didn't realize in Eli Drinkwitz's first three years they went five and five, six and seven, six and seven before the eleven and two out of nowhere last year. And and listen, they played Georgia really close. They played LSU close in Columbia, Georgia obviously in Athens. So they're a team that's not going to catch anybody off guard, and I think they know that. The question is, how do you handle the target on your back? And I look yeah. at their schedule. Their first month is pretty easy. They should be 4-0 going into a road game at Texas A&M in October. If they win that one, they're 5-0. Um, and then your toughest game after that is a road trip to Alabama. But every game, and I would even count a road game at Alabama, is probably winnable. So the hype train could get going around Missouri midway through this season if they pick up where they left off last year. Well, star wide receiver Luther Burden, someone put it to him directly. Do you think Missouri can win the SEC this year? And he flatly, calmly, and quietly said, yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why not? Exactly. With, so, with the schedule they've got, they miss Georgia, um, they miss Texas, they miss, uh, I believe they miss LSU, um, and they, they they do play Oklahoma. But, again, even if you lose that one game to Alabama, if you win the rest, you're 7-1 and one in the league, and who knows how the tiebreakers and other results and all that stuff shake out. You end up 7-1, and one, you put yourself in a pretty good spot. Well, there you go. That's a wrap from day two here at SEC Media Days. 
Everything we talked about here is on the website at ujasports.com plus much more. And while you're there, go ahead and check out the TikTok account as well. Live video, Carson Beck, hear him in his own words tell you how much he grew up from the 19-year-old back in 2021 who didn't handle it very well to the undisputed leader of this Georgia Bulldogs team. UGASports.com and a Dan Beast Media. That's Jed May. I'm Randy Powers. We'll see y'all tomorrow.